Humphrey, vigilante Hughes and I each take our places surrounding the Black Dragon for an all of our own defensive strike. The Black Dragon's body is harder than I had expected. Life's like giving Corinne scales from head to tail since before it was even born. Not even Humphrey, with sword three times the size of a normal weapon, can do more than barely scratch it after attacking at length. Damn, this thing's harder than a rock. The black dragon suddenly twists its body, swinging its tail at we use behind it. Ah! Damn it. The youth collapsed onto the ground. Then immobilized, and the black dragon began to turn around. Humphrey attempted to keep slashing at it from behind, but a violent flashing tail kept him from approaching. It's too late. Just as the fort came up, a solitary female figure approached in front of a fallen youth. No hard feelings, but if you keep going like this, your raging's gonna get destroyed. You're gonna destroy me in. I'd cause a lot of trouble for my employer. Ulan! I was not expecting Ulan to appear. Who's that? You're protecting your village, aren't you? So lend me a hand. Ah! Ah! fist of a black dragon's body in a succession of strikes. Used by attack, it quickly finds itself at her mercy. How'd you like that? Secret technique, angry dragon! A finishing blow. Holy hell, she is awesome. Come on, are you done already? Surprise by attack. The black dragon spread its wings, soaring into the sky and quickly disappears. Whoa, you did it. You drove off a dragon! The villagers have returned without my noticing. Raise a cheer. That was really something. That dragon. Anyway, you can face a dragon with bat barehanded. I said those words, I turned to look around at the spot where the female fighter was standing, but she was already gone. Barely succeeded in driving away the black dragon, we carried a clap to youth the innkeeper butts us in. Well, come by again. Seeing how you drove off a dragon, you guys are really something. <sighs> that fighter gal was amazing too. Who was she? Someone you know? No, nope, don't know her. But she's injured. I'll see to her she stops by. Alright, I'll leave that to you. While our butts be like belted out orders, I tell him to all the injured, Humphrey and I were in the dining hall. We watched as the villagers came in and gathered together by one by one. But our butts are the de facto leader of the village. As the villagers, all of them had the same angry wounds. Most of the dragon crashations at having been chased away. Um, is there a sort of name Sir Humphrey here? Huh? Ah! Dragon! Someone help! Everyone stared fixedly on a young boy standing in the entrance. Or to be precise, white dragon which the shy kid was holding to his chest. <sighs> Why did you come here? I'm sorry. I was worried, so. Village is looking pretty bloodthirsty. Not surprising. A dragon where enemies appeared in front of their eyes being carried in the arms of a boy. What the hell? Is that real, dragon? You don't have to worry about Bright. He won't attack. How are we supposed to trust that? Hey, guys. It looks like it's just a baby. 
So right now, yeah, revenge. Revenge? Yeah, that's right. There were rumours of a dragon nest up in the hills behind the village, so the guys went to exterminate them, but no one came back. Exterminate them? How could you do such a thing? Huh? Seriously, do you know what you're saying? That's... Ha ha ha! Somebody. I thought it would be Sheena. Jonah. Jonah is... What are you talking about? What happened to Jonah? Jonah, she, she just disappeared. <laughs> what? Hey, tell me everything. <sighs> D -d Damn it. I invited her out this afternoon for a walk in the East Mountain. When we were climbing the mountain. Hey, what do you mean you took her to the East Mountain? That's where a dragon lives. What were you thinking going there? We heard a roaring sound coming from inside a cave and all around us these glowing balls of light appeared. They all gathered around Jonah and she dis disappeared in a flash. Ah, Jeez. I'm just going to stand around thinking about it. Who's there? Sheena, your irresponsibility in taking care of that girl is really too much. But grown men have ordered... Uh, having orderly meeting, coming inside and doing, instead of doing anything, coming together just to die, idle complaints. My boss may be annoyance, but he doesn't take things lying down. Most of all, the mischief maker isn't that white dragon, but rather a black dragon on a mountain, isn't it? Everyone's completely uh, complete silent. The villagers seem to have lost their capacity to speak. You're from earlier. So, if it's troubling you, then I, Ulan, will take over Dragon Extermination, alright? With boss's permission, this will be a payment-free contract. Oh, really? But are you really going alone? Don't worry about it. Hey, Humphrey. You're definitely going, aren't you? Yeah. And then... Ulan, from close, approaches a young man who's sunk down to a floor. Sheena. I know what you're thinking, but you're coming too. M me, me too. It's only natural that you should rescue a lady again. What? Aren't you going after all? Oh, okay. Damn. I thought it was supposed to be your boss. That's more like you're using me. Is that so? Such a shame that you lost your wallet, then, isn't it? Ah, uh, right. And then, the blonde guy over there. Really good at issuing orders on the fly. You're going? Me? Oh. I guess so. Before I can say anything, Ulan has her arm around my neck. Hey, you're a pretty handsome guy. Do this backwater village a favour and go exterminate a dragon. You're going down in the songbooks or something. Oh well. It'll be fine, you'll get a full share of the reward. Besides, aren't you a short on travel money? How? Right, I just saw a guy complaining about prices at the trading post, that's all. Seriously, things like crystal balls aren't going to sell in a place like this. Ooh, I'm fine, let's go in my head. Talk's over. If it's just that many people, I guess I can manage somehow. In the end, I somehow became part of a dragon extermination group. Well, at least it looks like I'll have company for a while longer. Thanks to a fighter who had introduced herself as Ulan, I somehow wound up going dragon slaying. For the time being, Peter returned to her inn, and villagers had gone back to their homes. Sorry about earlier, blowing up like rats. As an apology, why do we say dinner's on the house? Build with your strength tomorrow. Having completely regained composure, apologetic looking butts, brought out a tray filled with dishes. As it all would have been decided, 
we were going to go slay by the Black Dragon tomorrow. Tonight we're going to rest at the inn. That weird talk about light from earlier. What exactly was that about? Well, before that guy showed up after a dragon attack, I never heard about it before either. Fudge, any ideas? No. Though we answered the question, Fudge's face remained daycast. Well, I guess he's, a, he's not very eager about hunting down that black dragon. I've never heard of a dragon with that kind of weird special power before. That's more than just a little ominous. Our opponent's a dragon. No such thing as an easy win with one of these, right? I don't really have a clue either when Joan disappeared and just run back here as fast as I could. And you remember the path he took, right? If you say you can't recall, we'll leave tomorrow. You'll be sorry. You'll be fine. It's almost like bullying. Thank you for the food. With his words, Fudgley got up from his seat and carried Bright Room out of the dining hall. Same as ever, that kid. Oh. Having apparently thought of something, Humphrey wordlessly got up from his seat and made his way upstairs. Fudge was sitting by the open window with a bright in his lap, looking up at the moon. The night air blowing in through the window made his hair sway. Catch his bright's attention and, well, lifted his head to sniff at it. That wild dragon. It's probably an innocent baby like Bright was once, too. Yeah. Having said that, the two laps into silence for a little while. Fudge is probably thinking about that dragon. As a Humphrey, he's definitely worrying about Fudge. How could I walk in on a scene like that? Just as I was about to turn him and go back around, Humphrey opened his mouth again. Fudge. What do you think about the villagers? What do I think? They hate dragons so much it makes me angry. It's not just that. Anger and truth, that is the voice of their sorrow. The dragon's just being a dragon and may hate it for that. But, even so, for me to kill a dragon, I can't do it. Of course, the wild dragon is pitiful. The villagers, they also. I know! But what right do we have to judge that dragon? It must have been very hard for it living alone like that. That's why! For us to snatch away its life like that, who says we have that right? Dragons are all the same. I think that way too. But I don't mean it's the same way the villagers do. Even a dragon has a right to live, doesn't it? For a dragon knight's dragon's sakes and the white's sake. That's why I... Fudge. I know you care about the dragon. But is that really okay? What do you think will happen if we leave this rampaging dragon be? What will happen? That's... Don't forget a single word those villagers said. All of them hostility towards dragons. If you think dragons are such noble creatures, then don't you have to protect them from everyone's misunderstanding? Don't you have to keep protecting its nobility? Fudge, I'm sure you understand. That wild dragon is going to keep struggling painfully like this. As Fudge drooped his head, Humphrey lightly placed a hand on his shoulder. Looks like it won't be needed here. I quietly closed the door, leaving the two like that. Headed back downstairs. Looking at the sky from the stairway landing, the moon seemed kind of kind of, kind of rat tower in its light. Silence returned to the inn. I went back to my room as well, lay down on the bed, and looked out the window of the moon. Crystal Valley. A battle is waiting for me there. 
kind of kind of can't help feeling about Julie. She's looking at the same moon. What could she be thinking about right now? So, we made out of Calaria safely. Yeah, you should be getting close to Crystal Valley by now. I'm glad. But he made it out safely. But it's imperative to, to bring that guide back to get the truth of what happened that night. That night. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make you remember it. No, it's alright. Then brother will again. Yeah, he's always been like that. He'll do it all by himself. But just this once. He's really serious about this. Brother is serious about this. And this is Julie. It's not the truth, and I have no right to. S I do. If it's not the truth, then I have no idea why Nash would say such a thing. He said. He said that. Now this is a story I will tell you myself. We left the village at the break of dawn and at the end of the episode as well. Bye-bye.